Welcome back to part 3 of the discussion on the cubic wave field. We spoke in part 2 of the effect that introducing three internal planes into the cubic wave field have. The introduction of these three planes is achieved by the process of cosmic mind thinking, wishing to express the idea which he knows in cosmic mind knowing, but into a simulated reality of cosmic mind thinking. Those three internal planes which divided the cube, the undivided cube up into, a, into eight equal parts, are now free to move. And it is cosmic mind that controls the movement of those, way, of those planes. For cosmic mind is without his creation controlling it. When we look face on through the Z plane or the Z plane into the wave field, we see a perfectly symmetrical distribution of the wave axes. However, when the Y plane is moved as a result of the process of cosmic mind thinking, then a polarity is introduced. That is, there is a difference in concentration of the undivided light between the left side of the, of the Y plane and the right side. So it's more dense on the left side and less dense on the right side. The effect that this has is that it creates a a polarity gradient or an electrical polarity gradient and the reason it's an electrical polarity gradient is because electricity is the force cosmic mind uses to keep the poles apart. This is how electricity is manifested. It is manifested as a result of cosmic mind thinking his idea and parting the undivided light into its various constituent pairs. Electricity is the force that is used to keep the polarity prized apart in order that that polarity can manifest a simulated image of the idea of creation. Now rather than a rectangle, Walter correctly indicates the presence of a polarity and electricity in a cone. Just a point of note though on this particular cone, once you see the apex of a cone closed it only refers to the apex of the wave in the plus plus four position. All other cones have open tops because it, the generative part of the cycle involves compressing around a, a hollow centre and the hole is only completed and filled in at, in the plus plus four position. So whenever you see a cone like that just bear that in mind. We can use this graphic here as a reference point when we are talking about x, y and z planes moving and x axis and y axis and which is which. It's just important to know that the z plane, as I refer to it, is the one that moves in and out of the screen or the page. The x plane is the one that moves up and down and the y plane is the, is the one that moves left to right. And all of these uh, planes move as a result of the concentrated effort of cosmic mind. Now we spoke in part two of the movement of the z-plane in isolation. In fact, the z-plane moves in tandem with the y-plane. They have a reciprocal 90 degree relationship to one another. That is, as the z-plane moves in and out of the page or the screen, the y-plane moves left and right. So they have a dynamic interdependent relationship on one another that is reciprocal. And um, I'm hoping that in, the, in this graphic here you can get some idea. So the Z plane represents the movement of, of the east-west equator poles and movement along the Y plane in, is indicative of movement in the north-south poles. So we know that by compressing a, a cone base which, which lies on the east west equator poles we can actually get the north south poles to project into into manifestation so they have an they have an inter a reciprocal interdependence on one another as the east west pole compresses the north west the north south pole extends and as the east west pole radiates or expands then the north south pole collapses back in on itself and what the result of that will become evident as we move through the presentation. With the z-plane in its fullest extent, i.e. the greatest distance from the centre, that facilitates the imaging of a flat disk on the y-plane. Because it's a flat disk 
and because the east-west poles are fully extended therefore there is very very little um, extension of the north-south poles. It's only when the east-west poles compress does a significant north-south pole develop. Now east-west and north-south poles have a 90 degree interdependent relationship with one another so they have a symbiotic relationship as one pushes in the other will respond by extending out and as the Z plane moves away from the centre towards the cubic wave field edge the north south poles will collapse again back in to a flattish disc at the centre of the wave field. So they have this kind of piston, reciprocal piston action. You can see there in the graphic that as the east west poles move from a position which is far out close to the wave field boundary which is by us interpreted as a cold region so it's blue but as it moves in closer compressing the cone base it causes the north south poles to extend out into a into manifestation so when the east west pole is fully extended what we have in fact defined is the zero position within the entire octave wave field this is the position that the inert gases occupy and the inert gases in general uh, are quite flat disc like structures, that is light structures as opposed to solid structures. They have um, very extended east-west poles but very compressed or very stunted north-south poles and that's what gives them the, the um, disc-like quality and we see this type of character um, throughout the galaxy. By simply or reorientating the graphic that we showed earlier we ha can now transpose the zero position into a much more f familiar position. This position here shown on the screen is, is also the zero position, but here we can see how it occupies the center of a cubic wave field. So the inert gas centers a cubic wave field and it's from that center that the images are projected into, its, into that wave field. If I reorientate the cone of polarity, you can begin to see the beginnings of a waveform beginning to manifest itself. So a typical waveform has this kind of, of look to it, but it's based on the reorientation of the cone of polarity. All expressions of creation are based on the cone of polarity. But in order to explain the complete wave, we don't quite have enough information yet. I'll just reorientate the zero position here for a moment. This is the position that the inert gases occupy within the wave field. It represents an area of complete or almost complete balance and so therefore will have very little um, detectable presence in our illusionary uh, universe. You can see here in Walter's diagram that he represents the inert gases there in the top part of that diagram on the left and on the right. That's how the cone bases are formed. The cone bases are formed as a result of very extended east-west poles, which is the z-plane being fully moved away from the center. And it's compression of that z-plane which forces the uh, cone base to contract and compress and, and enables the apex to emerge from that cone base. So our zero position for the inert gases represents the very bottom part of that drawing there of Walters, just that part of it where the disk is quite flat. We've got fully extended east-west uh, poles, but very compressed north-south poles. Okay, so we have a model now for the cosmic projector. It is based on a cube that has six internal reflecting mirrors. Those mirrors bounce light backwards and forwards between themselves, opposite mirrors, but they also allow light to pass through them in a translucent way into neighbouring wave fields where the uh, harmonic image is forms the centre of, of its own wave field and the whole process is repeated again. We also know that the introduction of three internal planes into that cubic wave field has the effect of dividing the undivided light and it div that division causes the manifestation of our, in of our entire electromagnetic spectrum, only a portion of which we can actually sense with our eyes. Cosmic Mind controls the positioning of those three internal planes because that's what 
concentrative mind does. It controls its creation from without. So the Z plane and the Y plane have a reciprocal 90 degree relationship with another. So as one moves, the other moves in a reciprocal 90 degree reaction to that movement. As the Z plane or the east west poles compress, they cause the north south poles or the Y plane to extend, or the Y plane at least to move left or right. This is how north and south poles manifest. They manifest as a direct result of compression of the cone base. It is the cone base that that is responsible for the projection of north-south poles into our perceived reality. Once any movement in those internal planes occurs as a result of cosmic mind wishing to express an idea, we lose the purity of the light in that wave field and what manifests in its place is our entire electromagnetic spectrum, a portion of which we can sense with our eyes. So any manifestation of an image in a wave field is reproduced in every wave field. First of all it, it is transmitted to all of the wave fields and all, the, all other wave fields accept that transmitted image and rebroadcast it to all other sub wave fields throughout the entire cosmos. And that's what Walter me means by saying that a small little reaction or action here on Earth can be felt throughout the entire cosmos. It's because all actions are reproduced in every wave field. Having the above image transmitted to all wave fields as a static image is complicated enough. But once we start to introduce motion into the wave field, then the tapestry becomes incredibly complex throughout all of the cosmos. That motion is introduced into the wave field by the movement of the X plane, and we will cover that in the next video. Just check in the show notes below where I have the link to the above website, and you can get some more uh, detailed information and description on that website.